I once again welcome you all to editorial analysis of Shankar IAS Academy. Today's date is 2nd of September 2024. I have an important announcement for you. See, year on year, preliminary examination is getting tougher. So, to check your preparedness and be prepared for the prelims 2025, we are launching pre stroming test series. It will be starting on 6th September 2024. It will be covering 48 tests and we have given the registration link in the description. You can click the link in the description and register for the test series. Along with that, we have All India UPSC Mains Open Mock Test 2024. So, who are all going to appear for 2024 Mains Examination, you can click the link in the description and register for the test and give your test to check your preparedness for Mains 2024. So, along with this announcement, displayed here are the two Mains articles that we are going to discuss. So, without much delay, let us get into the news article discussion. Now, look at this article about water crisis. The author of the article states that the rejuvenation of silter water bodies is the affordable solution solution to the water crisis that India faces. So, this is what the article is talking about. So, in this news article discussion, let us see what are all the steps taken to address the water crisis in India. First, let us start with the definition of what is water crisis. See, a water crisis occurs when the demand exceeds supply of clean, soft, safe and portable water. As you all know, the threshold for the water required is only 1000 cubic meter per person per year. But when this threshold is breached, we call it as water crisis. So, let us see some of the statistics related to water crisis in India. As you all know, India has 18 percentage of world population, but we have only 4 percentage of fresh water. Again, this has been contaminated with pollution. For example, nearly 70 percentage of the groundwater is contaminated and their levels are declining. This contamination is due to the pollution and the level of groundwater is declining due to over exploitation and extraction. So, this has actually reduced the per capita water availability. If you can see here, the per capita water availability has declined from 1500 cubic meter from 1816 cubic meters. So, it is expected that it will again reduce to 1140 cubic meter by 2050. So, this is the sad state of water crisis in India. Most of the groundwater extraction is done for meeting the drinking water needs and the second highest extraction is is done for agriculture. Apart from this, urban water demand has increased. As per a projection, population increases 600 million by 2030 and the water demand for them will be increasing by 74 percentage by 2030. So, these are all the statistics related to water crisis. Now, let us see certain steps taken by our government for water conservation. See, the first important step is the National Water Mission. It is part of NAPCC that we saw priorly. It focuses on conservation, efficiency and and equitable and equitable distribution of the fresh water that is available. Now, the second important scheme is the Jal Shakti Abhyan. See here, the water conservation and water harvesting is promoted and it mainly focuses on rejuvenation of traditional water bodies. So, here reuse and recharge structures will be built. This will again lead to watershed development and it also has a component of afforestation. So, beyond water conservation, it also conserves the entire biodiversity of a particular region. This is with respect to Jal Shakti Abhyan. Now, the third important scheme is the Atal Bujal Yojana or in short called as Atal Jal. It is a World Bank funded project for groundwater management. Fourthly, Swajal scheme. It is a very decentralized community owned program for safe drinking water. And finally, we have micro irrigation fund. This fund encourages micro irrigation for water conservation, especially among the farmers in the dry area. So, these are all certain schemes. Now, let us see some of the significance of micro irrigation. See, firstly, it is energy efficient, meaning we do not require a lot of energy to supply water to the crops. So, we conserve energy. Secondly, it reduces water logging and it helps in reducing the salinization of the soil. So, it helps in conserving the soil fertility. Thirdly, it increases crop yield because it provides only the essential water that required for the crop with the essential nutrients. Fourthly, it reduces water stress by saving more water and overall it helps in conserving the biodiversity of the region itself. So, the two important schemes that were initiated for this micro irrigation were Rashtriya Krishi Vikas Yojana and the National Mission for Sustainable Agriculture in short called as NMSA. So, this is about the micro irrigation and the government initiative. 
initiatives. Apart from this, we have the Catch the Rain initiative. It is launched by National Water Mission under Ministry of Jal Shakti. The main aim of this particular initiative is to conserve and sustainable management of the water resources. See, this initiative is a community-centric initiative. So, what the government does is they fund to desilt water bodies. This desiltered waste it is used as fertilizer by the farmers to the crops and through awareness campaigns rainwater harvesting especially in the rooftop then creation of water storage structures and water resource mapping all this will be done under this initiative called catch the rain initiative so what will be the impact of this particular scheme it will increase water retention and replenish the groundwater and also remember it will be implemented both in rural and urban area across India. See so far we saw about what is water crisis then we saw some of the statistics related to it and then we saw some of the government initiatives to contain the water crisis because in the past 25 years nearly 50 percentage of land area has converted into drought prone region in India and it is the high time to devise a strategy and solve the particular issue. This has not only caused the region drought prone but also led to migration and food security issues. So all we need is a immediate and community driven solution to address the water crisis and especially through water harvesting and efficient water use in agriculture. So these are all very relevant facts that you have to remember from this particular news article and we have a main question for you. Let me read out the question. The situation of water crisis in India need the utmost attention and scrutiny. Support the statement with data and reports. See, it is a 15 marker question with 250 words. You can write an answer and post it in the comment section. We'll review your answer. So, with these learnt facts, now let us move on to the next news article. Look at this article about India's neighborhood first policy. Now, currently it is in news because India is revisiting this policy in order to adjust itself to the current trend and some of the geopolitical instability happening in the neighborhood region. So, this is what the article is talking about. So, in this news article discussion, let us revise about the policy from the mains perspective. See, as you all know, India's neighborhood first policy is nothing but an approach to manage its relation with neighborhood countries. What are all the neighborhood countries they include afghanistan bangladesh bhutan maldives myanmar nepal pakistan and sri lanka the policy originally emerged in 2008 and its objective includes firstly to enhance the connectivity this connectivity enhancement is through physical digital and people to people connectivity now secondly it is to boost the economic trade and commerce within the region and thirdly to foster strong relation for regional stability and cooperation this is what the objective of india's neighborhood first policy apart from this it has other major objectives let us see them one by one see the first thing is to counter china's influence particularly in the indian ocean region so when india equally engages with its neighboring countries it could easily counterbalance or balance the china's influence in the indian ocean region so this is the first major objective secondly to showcase multilateral leadership for example, India in G20, it asked for joining of African Union and emphasized for Global South. So, in order to showcase its multilateral leadership, India's neighborhood first policy plays an important role. Thirdly, to maintain its territorial integrity and to counter the separatist threats. For example, India and Bhutan joint management helped in solving the Doklam issue itself. Fourthly, to maintain the maritime security. Here, India is participating in Indian Ocean Rim Association actively to fight against piracy and peaceful movement of goods. Fifthly, energy security. For example, India, Myanmar, Thailand trilateral highway is an agreement between three countries to import oil and gas transported through sea. So, for the energy security, it is very important. Sixthly, it acts as a bridge for the development gaps in India's northeastern states. A very good example for this is the trilateral highways. And finally, to showcase India's soft power diplomacy and to leverage cultural and historical connection, neighborhood first policy is a very important policy. So, these are all very key objectives of neighborhood first policy. Now, let us move on to see some of the challenges with respect to the policy. See, the first thing is the historical dispute. We have long term historical 
and territorial dispute between Pakistan and China. A very good example for this is 2020 Galwan Valley clash. Secondly, we are facing secondly we are facing cross border terrorism. A very good example for this is 2019 Pulwama attack. Now this tension is restricting peaceful cooperation with our neighborhood region. Thirdly, economic imbalances. See disparities in economic development actually leads to unequal partnership and difficulties so this actually hinders economic cooperation between the neighboring countries apart from this there are currently we have a political instability in bangladesh and we have a political instability in myanmar so all these actually hinders the bilateral ties between india and the neighboring countries a very good example for this is the kaladan multimodal transit transport project fifthly we face geopolitical competition a very good example for this is china's influence in Sri Lanka especially with respect to the Hambantota port. Sri Lanka has leased the port to China which actually affects the security of our nation and finally we face challenges in developing cross-border infrastructure due to the topography and unexpected climate event. So these are all certain challenges with respect to the India's neighborhood first policy. Now let us see some of the government initiatives to foster the relationship between the neighborhood. The first important one is the SARC and and the second important body is BIMSTIC. Through both the platforms, India is trying to have regional cooperation among all the neighborhood countries. It has also led to sharing of funds, sharing of infrastructure, people to people connectivity, sharing of trade agreements and etc. Now the third important thing is the SEO initiative. Here the government has pushed for global center for traditional medicine. This enhances India's role in medical tourism. Finally, India also pitches for capacity building. A very good example for this is Indian Technical and Economic Cooperation or in short called as ITEC program. Under this, under this particular program, India provides scholarship and training for students. This engages, this engages students, build capacity and promote regional ties. So, so far we saw about what is India's neighborhood first policy. We saw some of the objectives of the policy. Then we saw some of the challenges with respect to it and we saw some of the government initiatives that have been taken to ensure ties with all the neighborhood countries so now we have a main practice question for you let me read out the question for you neighborhood first is a major component of india's foreign policy examine the role this policy has played in india's engagement with its neighbors particularly in the context of china's growing influence in south asia so this is a 15 marker question for 250 words so write an answer and post it in the comment section so with this we came to the end of the news article discussion if you like the video hit like do comment and don't forget to subscribe to shankar ias academy youtube channel and thank you so much for listening